Blue Coal Dealer presents The Shadow. These half-hour dramatizations are designed to forcibly demonstrate to old and young alike that crime does not pay. Today, at the close of our shadow adventure, we have a distinguished guest whom we are very anxious to present to our audience. Our guest is a very charming young lady who spends her time preventing crime. I know you will all be interested to hear what she has to say, so be sure to listen. Before today's exciting adventure with the shadow, a word with you homeowners. Wouldn't you welcome steadier, more healthful heat throughout your home this winter? Wouldn't you like to put a stop to colds in your family brought on by on and off variations of heat? Then be sure to order blue coal next time you need a supply of fuel. It's America's finest anthracite. Your family will enjoy blue coal's dependable, even warmth. You will welcome its greater health protection and all-around economy. Ask for Blue Coal by name. It's the solid fuel for solid comfort. The shadow, mysterious character who aids those in distress and helps the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane is the only person who knows to whom the unseen voice belongs. The only one who knows the true identity of that master of other people's minds, the shadow. Today's story, Guest of Death. Guard, this is certainly a tremendous prison, isn't it? I had... No idea it was so big. And this is your first visit here? Yes, Mr. Kesey. I'm in town on a convention. One of the boys gave me the pass to the prison. I was afraid he might be playing a joke on me that might be a fake. Oh, the pass is quite good, quite good. Titled you to a complete tour of the prison. All right, well, this will be something to tell the folks back home. Oh, uh, excuse me, guard. Uh, do you mind if I ask you a question? Uh, not at all. What is it? That little gray building down there across the courtyard... What is that? That's the death house. The... Oh. Well, I, I don't suppose you take visitors in there, too, do you? Oh, yes. Yes, certainly. Uh, you want to see it, of course. Well, Mr. Kesey, uh... well, I guess it would be a thrill. Thrill? Yes. Yes, it would be the greatest thrill you've ever experienced. <laughs> Here's the last sight on your tour. Uh, step right in, please. Thank you. What place is this, Mr. Kesey? The building you saw across the courtyard. The death house. Oh. Oh, I see. Oh, don't be afraid. Uh, step right in. Well, oh, thank you. There, you see. It's not an unpleasant room at all, is it? Well, not in appearance, no. But, Mr. Kesey, when you start to think of the men that have... Died here? Well, oh, nonsense. Death has nothing to fear. There's a majesty, a nobility about it that makes people's revulsion stupid. Uh, those benches there are the observer seats. Uh-huh. The pre-execution cells are just beyond that door. Uh-huh. And uh, this, as you see, is the electric chair. Yeah. And say, uh, it's quite warm in here, isn't it? I suppose a bit. Uh, this panel here is where the executioner stands. He holds his hand on the switch and the signal from the warden. He throws it in. Like this. <gasps> oh, now, don't be alarmed. Shouldn't shouldn't we leave now? Uh, first, of course, you want to sit in the chair? Well, no, no, I, I I hadn't thought of anything like that at all. I oh, my, my. You're a timid soul. <laughs> Why, this is an experience you'll never have again. <laughs> Here, let me help you. Just uh, sit right down. Well, if it's a customary thing, why... Of course, there you are. 
You see, nothing to it at all, is there? Imagine. Men have died just like this. Yes, men have died. Just like that. Here, I'll show you how it feels to be strapped in. Well, I I, I can imagine how I... I... There. The chest strap across here. <laughs> You've drawn that a bit tight, Mr. Keezy. I took the wind out of me. That's the way it goes. Now, the right arm strap, like that. And the left... Oh, this thing certainly hugs a man close, doesn't it? Yes. It's a powerful embrace. Now we'll strap the left leg and the right leg like this. Now, there you are. Ready for the most noble and majestic experience of all. God, what do you mean? Death. No, no, keep away from that. Visitor dies in death house. Read all about it. Visitor dies in death house. X-ray, X-ray. Visitor dies in death house. Shall I call you a taxi, sir? Yes, please. Well, Margot, how did you like the opera? Oh, it was simply grand, Lamont. But I'm tired. I'll be glad to get home. Read all about it. X-ray. Visitor dies in death house. What's that? Visitor dies in death house. Oh, now, Lamont, please, let's not spoil a lovely night with scare headlines. People are liable to die most any place. Your cab, sir. <laughs> a boy. A boy. Our cab's waiting, Lamont. Uh, just a moment, Margot. I have reason for wanting to know the story back of that headline. Paper, sir? Uh, yes, son. Well, there you are. Oh, thank you, sir. Read all about it, Jack. All right, Margot. Sorry to keep you waiting. That's all right. Oh, I know you're just dying to get to your story, so go right ahead, Lamont. Go ahead, read it. Here, I'll switch on the light. Well, thank you, Margot. Well, there's much to it. Newspapers strangely brief. Merely the headlines and a seven-line box on the first page. What does it say? Simply that a visitor died in the death house on a tour of inspection. There doesn't seem much in that to excite the imagination of the shadow. I'm not so sure about that, Margot. Surely you don't see anything sinister in such a bare announcement, Lamont? That's just the point, Margot. The account is too bare. What do you mean? Well, the newspapers don't seem to know anything. And it says here that the prison officials are saying nothing. Well, perhaps there's nothing more to say. There's an old proverb, Margot, to the effect that virtue rarely lies behind a tight lip. Well, I noticed that ferret gleam in your eye, so I might as well accustom myself to the idea that you're off on another adventure in crime. Yes, Margot. Off on an adventure that promises to be one of the most exciting I've ever had. Commissioner Weston speaking. What? You can't get the warden on the phone? Yeah, yeah, I can't. This is the police warden. department. He can't ignore us. Well, you try him again and keep trying until you get him. You like now, hold it a minute, boys. Ropey. Yeah? What happened when you went out to prison? Well, the same thing that happened to your phone call, Chief. Nothing. Couldn't you get any information? All I could find out was that the guy was in town on the furniture convention. He got a pass to see the prison and some guard by the name of Keezy took him through. Did you question this, Keezy? He couldn't get a hold of it. Why not? Well, Chief, we found out that he lives way up on the Cape, so Jim here and me went out there. And then what happened? Nothing. If somebody says nothing to me again, I'll... Just a minute. Yes. Hello? Commissioner Weston speaking. <laughs> Good evening, Commissioner Weston. Oh, you again? Yes, Commissioner. The shadow. Just a minute. Hold the line. Uh, you men wait outside. I'll call you if I need you. Okay, Commissioner. We'll be right out. All right, Shadow. Go ahead. What's on your mind? I called to find out what you know about the death of that visitor out of the prison. I don't know a thing, and I can't find out anything. The prison officials don't seem inclined to cooperate at all. Did you know, Commissioner, that a short time ago another visitor died in the death house? What? Another visitor? Yes. First visitor's death passed almost unnoticed. But now, Commissioner, another. 
Say, this puts a new light on the whole matter. Calls for immediate action. No, Commissioner. Hold everything until you hear from me. Oh, hello, Margo. Come in. And don't take your hat off. We're leaving right away. I just get to your house, and then we have to leave. What's all the haste about? We're driving up to the prison. Oh, Lamont, don't tell me you're still thinking of that visitor's death. Thinking of it? Margo, I've discovered some things that make me feel I've got a big job on my hands. For one thing, I've discovered that another visitor died in that same death house. I've come to the conclusion that there's only one way I can find out what's back of it all. And how is that? Here. You see this? It's a visitor's pass. Yes. I'm going up there and go through that prison, just as those other men went through as a visitor. Oh, no. No, Lamont, you mustn't. I've got to, Margo. It's the only way. Well, I'm not usually given to superstition, Lamont, but there's something supernatural, something unearthly about those deaths. I don't want you to expose yourself to the same fate that overtook those poor men. I I won't let you do it. Come now, Margo. Don't let this get the best of you. Oh, Lamont, I... I'm afraid... I'm afraid. This is all right, Margo. Park the car right here. That's the entrance to the prison down there at the bottom of the hill. Lamont, I wish you wouldn't go through with this. You may be walking to your death. Don't worry, Margo. You stay here in the car. And remember this. Don't lose your courage. No matter what you may hear... Or what you may see. Hello, Keezy. You here again? Uh, yes, Mr. Harper. I'm taking this gentleman, Mr. Cranston, on a tour of our institution. Have to be searched, sir. Raise your arms, please. There you are. What are they going to stop handing out these visitors' passes, Keezy? Stop? Why should they do that? Well, I should think they'd be a little more careful because of what's already happened around here. Oh, nonsense, Mr. Harper. Accidents will happen, you know. No reason why prison routine should be upset unnecessarily. All right, Mr. Cranston, you're okay. Thank you. Open up, Tom. All right. Okay, Keezy, the place is yours. Thank you. Come right along, sir. Don't forget, Keezy. Bring him back alive. <laughs> Return you to the second half of The Shadow's exciting adventure in just a moment. In the meantime, homeowners, let me remind you that there is one sure way to save yourselves time, trouble, and money in heating your homes this winter. And that's by insisting on blue coal when you order your next supply of anthracite. With blue coal, you'll get steadier, more dependable heat at far less heating cost. For blue coal is mined from the heart of the northern Pennsylvania field the richest hard coal deposits in the United States. Each carload, as it comes from the mines, is washed with 12 and one-half tons of water for every ton of coal to remove any existing impurities. Then the coal is carefully sized and finally submitted to a thorough laboratory test by inspectors. Only the coal which meets the high standard of quality is accepted for shipment to blue coal dealers. Blue Coal's harmless blue coloring guarantees you that you're getting a coal that has been quality tested. A coal you can be sure is superior in every way. You'll find that Blue Coal banks more easily and gives you longer firing periods. And it saves you money by burning itself down to a fine ash. Blue Coal will heat your home with a minimum of attention and a maximum of heating comfort and efficiency. So call your nearest Blue Coal dealer for better heat at less cost this winter. You'll find his name listed in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the words Blue Coal. So, this is the death house, eh, Keezy? Uh, yes, Mr. Grant end of your prison tour. Hmm. Eerie sort of place, isn't it? Oh, that depends on the viewpoint. Uh, you've worked in this prison a long time, haven't you, Keezy? Uh, I've been here 35 years, Mr. Cranston. Really? Yes, sir. 35 years in the service. Yeah. 
Is this your regular job, taking visitors through the prison? Yes, I've been doing this for several years. But it's a poor substitute for the place that rightfully belongs to me. The place that rightfully belongs to you? What do you mean by that? Uh, nothing. Uh, nothing at all. I shouldn't even have mentioned it. Uh, come now, this has nothing to do with your tour of the prison. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't mean to pry into your affair. Oh, now, pay no attention to what I've said. I'm a bit out of sorts today, nervous, I guess. Yes, I understand. I suppose I'd be nervous, too, if I did the things you've done. The things I've done, Mr. Cranston? Uh, what do you mean by that? Oh, nothing, Keezy. I'm just thinking of how I'd be affected by 35 years spent in a place like this. That's all. It does play on a body's nerves. But a single visit can affect the nerves even more than 35 years. I'm afraid I don't understand. Oh, not now, perhaps. But you will. I oh, yes. You will. Well, it's been a very interesting tour, and I'm much obliged to you. I must be running along now. Uh, but I haven't explained this room, the death house, to you. Well, that's hardly necessary. Surely you wouldn't leave without sitting in the electric chair, Mr. Cranston. <laughs> My curiosity doesn't go to such extremes. But every visitor sits in the chair. Well, Keezy, you've been very thorough in showing me through the prison, so if you feel I'm spoiling your final touch, why, of course I'll sit in your chair. Ah, good. Uh, sit right down. All right. There we are. Now I'll strap you in. Oh, it won't take a minute. There. The chest strap's on already, you see. Well, you certainly did that with amazing speed, Keezy. Like an expert. I am an expert, Mr. Crafton. Years ago, I was a member of the execution squad. Really? Then you participated in the actual executions? I was one of the men whose job it was to strap the condemned in the chair. Ah, the man for each strap, you know. Speed is important. The quicker it's done, the less the condemned suffers. I was on the chest strap. That happens to be the most important one. Well, I can testify to your efficiency. I, I can hardly move a muscle. I don't suppose you can. There we are. Snug as a bug in a rug. But not so comfortable. Uh, by the way, Mr. Cranston, uh, you remember the famous Cosden case, don't you? Oh, very well. Cosden was brought to justice as a result of the efforts of a character known as the Shadow. Uh, then surely you must remember me. My picture was in all the newspapers at the time. Oh, really? I suppose you helped to strap Cosden in the chair. Oh, no, no. I executed him. You what? Oh, it was a very unusual uh, you see, we had a new executioner. At the last moment, the poor fellow's nerve gave away. Oh, there was quite a to-do. Carlton was already strapped in the chair. The warden was beside himself. Somebody had to bring matters to a conclusion. So, I volunteered my services. As executioner? Uh, yes. Oh, it was quite an experience. First and only time I ever attracted the least bit of attention. But it was the cause of the most bitter disappointment in my whole life. Disappointment? Uh, you see, I'd hoped that my service would be rewarded with a permanent appointment as executioner. You had an ambition to make a career of it? Oh, well, why not? Hundreds of others applied for the job. Oh, it's a position of distinction. Uh, you say you were promised the job? Yes, but the authorities didn't live up to the promise. They cheated me, robbed me of what was mine. Oh, I wouldn't let it disturb me so if I were you. Disturb me? rankled in my heart throughout the years and left me with one consuming desire to hate. A hatred like that can hurt no one but yourself. You think not, and I know better. I'll make them pay for what they've done to me. I'll make them pay. I think you have an entirely wrong attitude, Kizzy. Well, this has all been very exciting, and now if you'll unstrap me and let me out of this electric chair, why... What? Let you out of the chair, Mr. Cranston? Never. I'm going to give you what I gave the others. What do you mean, Kizzy? In a moment, I'm going to pull the switch and fling you into eternity. Let me out of this chair. Yes, I'll let you out. You can't do anything like that. You can't get away with it. I told you I'll make them pay for what they've done to me. Get yourself together, man. Why do you want to wreck your vengeance on people like me? Because you are people. And the people cheated me. And they'll pay for it. Cheesy, you're a fiend. I'm a cheater, man. That's only your excuse. An excuse you offer your conscience to justify the things you do. Shut up. There's only one reason for you doing a thing like this, Keezy. The desire to satisfy a vicious urge in your diabolic nature. Shut up, sir. You can't go through with this thing without your excuse. Well, I'm going to take that away from you. I'm going to turn you inside out and show you the fiend you really are. I'll let you. I'll shut you up. I'll put the headpiece on and cover your face with a death. Don't you dare. Take his knees. Take his knees, Mr. Uh, you can say what you want now. I don't have to hear you. Now, the switch. And 
Take you out now, Mr. Cranston. I've killed him. He's dead. Hey, lady. You can't park here all day. You'll have to move along. I'm waiting for a friend, officer. Don't you know you're not allowed to park within 500 feet of a prison? But my friend should be along any minute now. Where is he? He's in the prison. He, he's a visitor. Visitor? Did you say he's a visitor? Yes. What's the matter, officer? Why do you stand there like that? Tell me what's the matter. Officer. Oh, Lamont. Lamont. And figure out why people have their water pumps outside the house so they'll freeze. <gasps> Oh, uh, here you are, Mr. Keezy. I uh, don't expect this water pump will give you any more trouble. Leastwise, not tonight. You've done a good job, Mort. Sorry I had to get you up on a night like this. Tain't no pleasure plodding up that there sand road any night. <laughs> Say, what's the matter with that hound dog of yours? Doing a powerful lot of howling tonight, ain't he? Yes, quite a lot. They say uh, hounds howl like that when somebody dies. Dies? Yes, yes, I've heard that said. Chimney crickets. It's enough to make a body's skin creep. You, you don't suppose he sees something, do you? A spirit, I mean? No, it's nothing. Forget it. Uh, don't reckon even spirits would come up here. Uh, does he Does he often howl like that? I've only heard him do that twice before. Tonight makes the third time. Well, uh, there's your water pump. Fitting fine, Mr. Kesey. I'll be getting on down to home now. Good night to you. Good night, Mort. Rex, here, come here. In the house, where you going? Eat. Enough of that now. Lie down. Chicken-hearted old hound. Just like a human, you fear death too. That fool Mr. Cranston I sent to eternity today, he was afraid of death. But that didn't save him. He's no more. He's dead. And I'll send many of us after him. <laughs> what was that? Who's there? <laughs> Who's out there? Is that you, Mort? No, Keezy. Mort is well down the hill now. There's nobody out there. I'm right here, in your house. Right here in the room with you. I know where you are. You're in this house. <laughs> you see, I'm not in the closet. I'm right here, behind you. Who are you? What do you want? You, Keezy. I've come for you. Don't you touch me. Don't you come near me. <laughs> Surely you're not afraid of death. Death? Remember, only fools fear death, Kizzy. Get out. Get out. I'll find you. I'll kill you here. <laughs> you have a poor aim, Kizzy. Get out. Get out. You see, it's useless, Kizzy. You can't destroy what you can't see. Why have you come here? To end your criminal career. I have committed no crime. I'm going to make you confess to the murder of those innocent visitors at the prison. I don't know what you're talking you about. You cannot lie to me. I know. You killed those men in cold blood. That's a lie. I'll admit you're clever. You did your job with fiendish genius. But you're at the end of your rope, Kizzy. The only hope left for you is to confess and clear your soul. Oh, no, I'll admit nothing. Leave me alone. I won't confess. Oh, yes, you will. I'm not through with you yet. Look, Kizzy. This corner of the room. Right here. That's it. Now watch carefully. And you'll see someone you met not many hours ago. Look, Keezy. Look. Cranston. There. Now you see standing before you the man you stuck in the chair a few hours ago. Go away. Go away. You're dead. You're dead. Confess, Keezy. I killed you. You're dead. Confess. I won't. I won't. Go away. Confess. Wait, wait. Confess. All right. All right. I killed him. I killed him. But I'll never be taken alive. Never. Never! Ah! Lamont, stop playing for just a minute. Very well, Margot. 
No, I can't understand how Kesey could have hidden his crimes for so long. That's quite understandable, Margot. Each of Kesey's victims seemed to have died from natural causes. But Lamont, I... Now, let me explain, Margot. You see, Kesey was somewhat of a student of the psychology of fear. And this knowledge and the victim's natural fear of a factual instrument of death, the electric chair, enabled Kesey to produce a fear paralysis that stopped the hearts of his victims. They died of heart failure. Then he didn't actually electrocute them? He couldn't, Margot. The electric chair is never hooked to the powerhouse except during a legal execution. But you, Lamont, I, I thought you were dead. Well, Margot, I produced a death condition by a little trick in self-hypnosis that I learned from an old Hindu. I let Kesey think he had actually killed me. But it's an amazing case, Lamont. I'm glad it's over. Yes, Margot, it's over. Kesey was a fiend consumed by the heat of his own hatred. He's now the many destroyed. And who knows, perhaps theirs is the final and most complete vengeance. In a moment, we shall present to you our charming guest of the afternoon. But first, here's John Barclay, blue coal heating expert, with an important message. Thanks, Ken Roberts. Friends, I'm not going to do the usual thing and remind you just how many days are left before Christmas. But I do want you to know that a blue cold heat regulator is one present a man can give that he and everyone in his family will certainly appreciate this year and in the years to come. A blue cold heat regulator is a thermostat which automatically controls your furnace dampers. It enables your family to keep the entire house at just the temperature they wish, day and night, by simply raising or lowering the thermostat control. And a blue coal heat regulator is one present which will pay for itself in the long run. It will save coal, eliminate constant trips to the cellar, and cut down much of the time and trouble of constant furnace attention. So, homeowners, be sure to get in touch with your nearest blue coal dealer. Ask him about a blue coal heat regulator. It's one Christmas gift that will be long appreciated by every member of your family. I thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the sponsors of The Shadow are extremely happy to introduce to you a young lady who devotes her time to the problems of New York City's maladjusted families from which so often spring undesirable citizens and lawbreakers. It is with great pleasure that I introduce to you Miss Anne Halperin, probation officer of the Family Division of the Domestic Relations Court of the City of New York. Well, that sounds like a big job for such a little lady. Trying to help other people adjust their difficulties is always a big job, Mr. Roberts. But knowing that we are helping parents and children make the most of their lives makes it intensely satisfying work. And a mighty fine piece of work you're doing, too, Miss Halpern. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. I certainly hope so. I feel that I cannot stress too strongly the part that an unhappy or broken home can play in the formation of criminal habits. The Domestic Relations Court attempts to check the problem at one of its roots, just as you attempt to meet it in another way by showing your listeners so dramatically and convincingly the folly and complete futility of crime. Thank you, Miss Halpern. It makes all of us feel we're doing something really worthwhile, especially so knowing that you and your associates in the business of crime prevention believe our efforts are not in vain. It's been a real privilege to have you as our guest this afternoon, and we thank you very much, Miss Halpern. <laughs> Today's program is based on a story copyrighted by The Shadow Magazine. All the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. The Shadow Magazine is now on sale at your local newsstand. The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Next week, same time, same station, Blue Coal, America's finest anthracite, will again present another thrilling adventure of the shadow. Be sure to listen and be sure to burn Blue Coal.